What's going on, y'all? It is fishing time, and we are back here at the Surfside Jetty. You guys are going to be seeing me here quite a bit in these next couple videos. That's mainly because we're starting to finally get this nice green looking water. Sorry for the wind noise. And uh, it's been warm these last couple of days. So eventually those jacks got to show up. Those Spanish mackerel got to show up. There's a couple guys here at the end of the jetty that have been fishing all day. So I'm about to go ask them, you know, if they've had any luck, if anyone's gotten bit by something big, uh, what they've been catching. So we know already sheep's head are here. Uh, we've got some shrimp. I've got the cork already set up. But real quick before we start fishing for sheep's head, since I know they're going to be here, um, I'm going to go ahead and tie on my spoon. And then also I'm going to show you guys the jetty cork. Uh, I, in my last couple of videos, I've really just been fishing. I haven't actually shown you the rig or kind of talked about how we're catching them, what I'm doing. So we'll do that, help you guys out if you are new to sheep's head fishing. And yeah, it's going to be a great day. So y'all stay tuned. Alrighty y'all, so here is the spoon collection that we have got. Old spoons, new spoons. Should be some gold spoons in here somewhere. Uh, I'm not seeing them. But gold spoons can also come in handy. Depending on the day, they could be biting one or the other. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab one of these older spoons. I'd like to get rid of these rusty ones first. Uh, they'll still work, they're just eyesores. I've got a nice big tangle here. So we'll be back momentarily. What's up, bro? Chilling, going for some. Huh? I want some jacks, but I heard they're not here. So I'm gonna get not some sheep's head. All right, y'all, so this is what we got going on. I believe this is a two, maybe a three ounce spoon. And unfortunately for me today, all I've got is braid. I forgot to tie on a, a leader. I like to go for a pretty long leader because if you do get a jack, um, bringing them up from the deep they'll scrape against these rocks and it's really easy to snap your braid so Don't do what I do Make sure you get yourself a nice maybe, you know 40 pound test monofilament or fluorocarbon leader uh, If you can tie a uni to uni do that. It's a lot better for your guides but uh, Yeah, we're gonna be thugging it out with this today And then when it comes to tying braid so I'm tying straight to braid. I like to use the good old classic uni knot. It is pretty slip proof. I've never had an issue where it slips. Sometimes if you do like a trilene or a polymer knot, it'll have a tendency to slip with the uh, braid. So I always do this, give it a couple twists, wrap that around like so, bada boom. Get your line wet and then you just cinch it down and that is a very solid knot shouldn't have any trouble with that all right y'all so we've got the spoon set up and waiting just in case jack show up i did go down to the end and talk to those guys it's actually uh kevin and chris from gg anglers and carlos from beach bomber so we talked to those guys they said no jacks kevin said he saw spanish here earlier in the morning but then the water got dirty and they uh they ran away so we are going to be indeed fishing for sheeps unless we see like a school of jacks or someone gets hooked up on a jack or even a spanish mackerel i might tie a small spoon on to that setup but really quick let's go over the jetty cork i want to show you guys how that works how to tie it i won't show you how to tie it but if i show you how it works you should be able to figure out how to tie it it's fair enough all right so how does this rig work now right here I've got a pretty wild setup. Um, what you really wanna do is have a three-way swivel. I didn't have any three-way swivels, so I just took three different uh, barrel swivels here, attached them to a split ring, and have that three-way. So this middle one is just gonna connect to your main line. I use that same uni knot. And then you're gonna have a float, a weighted float. This is an outcast cork. You can buy these at Bucky's, um, Cabela's Academy. Just get yourself a weighted cork. You could even make one yourself. And that's gonna go off to about a foot, maybe a foot and a half piece of line right here. And what this does is this will float up to the top like so, and this will be down here. And then we're gonna take this portion of line. So we've got that foot and a half over here, and you wanna go seven to eight feet on this portion of line. So that is gonna be where you lead down to these split shot weights, and then we've got ourselves a hook. Now a hook is really personal preference. When I'm going for sheep's head, I love having a tiny little hook. Those fish have small little mouths and I feel like 
they can just get a hold of this really well. You can snag them. It's it's strong enough to uh, withstand their crunching power, if you will. And uh, I also think they have really good eyesight. So the smaller the hook, the better. This is um, 15 pound test. I use 15 pound test because again, they have really good eyesight. So I don't want them to be able to detect my line. This is a little scuffed, but it should be good enough for sheep's head, hopefully. This is about six feet of line and this is about one and a half. So total depth of eight feet when it's all stretched out. And the reason I really like this rig is like on a tough day, you can actually feel exactly when you're getting bit. Like you get bit and it tugs on this, which tugs on that instantly. So the cork is there to kind of keep your bait suspended in one spot and you have a visual of where your line is at, but you can actually feel it versus the slip cork. You really can't feel anything with that and you're kind of only being able to look at your, your float. And uh, with the sheep set especially, how they like to steal your shrimp, it can be extremely tough to to um, hook up on them or even know you got bit because uh, it's just not great sensitivity with that rig. Looks like the shrimp are a tad bit bigger from the shop. They got a mixed bag in there. But we'll grab the smallest ones we can and use them first. Usually going to be the better selection. Always, always, always use small shrimp. I always see a lot of guys out here fishing and it's really it can be um dang Dude, come on the sheep's head could be very particular with what they eat so you know if you're fishing the right depth and you're still not getting caught it's almost always going to be your bait selection they love shrimp they love peeler crabs and if you get shrimp they love the smaller ones and that goes back to the same deal they will eat a full-size shrimp but they'll eat it in half and leave you with your hook or like half a shrimp on your hook. That's no good. So we'll go ahead. I was gonna cast right there, but there's a bunch of floats stuck in the water. That's never a great sign. This looks decent enough. We'll make our cast out, and then you just kinda wait. Another pro tip, when you notice your cork getting really close to those rocks, just reel it in. You don't want to mess around and end up losing your setup. This is a real big pain to tie. You've got all the moving parts, um, especially if you don't have a triple triple swivel. I don't know what that's actually called. Just call it a triple swivel. And if you don't have that, then setting up that whole split ring, it just takes too damn long. So don't get stuck. That's the moral of the story. Just don't get stuck. When your court gets too close, reel it in. Looks like we got one. Hopefully this guy didn't swallow the hook because he came and bit it real incognito. Looks like a nice one. Not gonna be keeping any fish today. So he gets to go home for free. But that's really cool. We got our first keeper. I can still flex it, we caught a limit. And hopefully he does actually measure out to be a keeper because like I said, my cork never went down and I really didn't even feel him bite it. It's just a great example of how sneaky they can be when they're going for your hook. And uh, he probably got hooked himself. You know, when they get a hold of it like that, they literally swallow it into their bellies. And um, if you want to get your hook back, you got to pretty much pull out their stomach. So let's go ahead, measure this guy and see if anyone's keeping. All right, technical difficulties with our hat there. Oh, sweet, he didn't gut hook himself. That's awesome. It's right in the corner of the mouth there. So if he doesn't keep, he can go back and live a nice, healthy life, probably avoiding the hook from here on out. But yeah, you can see that tiny little hook, real easy to get into their small little mouths. Like, I don't know, that's about silver dollar sized. Let's see, he is spraying his milk everywhere. Oh man, but he's creaming all over my freaking board here. It's kind of gross. So he is gonna keep 15 and a half. We can go ask if these guys are keeping fish. And if they are, well, then they got one. 
Y'all keeping fish? Uh, yeah. There you go. We're not keeping any today. 15 and a half. I put it in that. You see that dude in blue? Man, he just came up from over there. That guy walking? Yeah. I got you. Just give it to him. He will know what's going on. Okay, but yeah, yeah, no problem. Nah, we got a bunch of sheep's head from the last couple trips. Is he a good size or? Yeah, he's 15 and a half. Are you trying to get him from the game board? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a YouTube prank. Yeah. All right, man, we are off to a good start. That was our first shrimp, and we got a keeper. It's pretty slick when you could do that. Normally, you have to weed through a bunch of little small guys in order to get to the keepers. We just got straight there, so hopefully we can keep it up. And like I said, man, we got a big mix of shrimp in here. Yeah, those are big, man. No, I don't need that. So yeah, this right here is the perfect size. Put these guys back in the bucket here. Trying to, ah, little bastard warned me, bro. And after you make your first couple casts, you'll notice your cork is drifting one way or the other. What I like to do if you have enough space, is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cast it farther to the left and watch it drift to the right. That is, of course, only if you have enough space because you don't wanna be crossing other people's lines, pissing everybody off. But it just makes it a lot easier and it allows you to leave your cork out there a little bit longer instead of having to recast over and over and over again. Oh no. Dude, there's like a, a fly flying around biting me, bro, like a damn mosquito. I'm Oof, excuse my French. I'm messing around with that stupid fly looking for him trying to take him out and we got robbed it's been a minute since our last bite too we've gone through several shrimp already and we finally got hit again i'm busy messing with that stupid fly man oh wow guys i didn't even feel him rob me but this right here is a perfect example of what it looks like and your shrimp are too big. They literally just eat that whole bottom portion of them and leave you at the top. There we go. Here's a nice small shrimp. Man, these flies are horrible out here, y'all. They are tearing me up every second. I'm looking down at my legs getting bit by a effing fly. It hurts so bad, eh? Come here. Hey, dude. Shrimp's done horned me three times, bro. I hope they eat you. I hope they eat your little asshole. Oh my god. Well, he's rambunctious. I'll tell you that much. Oh my lord, brother. Just let me hook you. Dude. Dude. You can't make this up, man. This little shrimp's got heart. Bro, these flies are destroying me. I don't know, bro. They're biting me. So though. many over there, too. I can't stop moving. I think there's like a the fly runs happening right now. <laughs> yeah, bro. For They're real, producing, dude. producing, I swear. <laughs> there you have it, guys. It's the damn fly run. Oh, there we go. You got him? Yeah. That? Um, you can get it. But we're not keeping fish, so I don't really care. Oh, he's pulling. Pulling some drag right here. That's a nice keeper. He got hit by something. Oh, he did? No, no, it looked like he did. Oh, it's a curse net. <laughs> Mother You're gonna find us a better net. Flies, bro. These flies, bro. I'm gonna lose my mind. Hate to be a broken record. Beat a dead horse, if you will. But I swear, they are like omnipresent flies everywhere. Ruining my fishing trip. Griefing me. Well, I'm just trying to catch sheep's head, baby. I don't think this guy would be a keeper. No, he's a keeper. 
You think? Yeah. How about no? Let's see. Nah, I mean, barely. Not even. You have to really pinch the shit out of that tail to barely reach 15. Well, fellas, we did end up measuring him right before my camera died, and he was like a millimeter away. Like nine tenths. 14 and nine tenths of an inch, if there ever was such a thing. Well, y'all, my camera died right there before we could get the release, but only our second fish for the day, which is pretty slow, but in my opinion, that's just a, um, I guess a testament to how easy it is to catch fish when they're spawning. Like, you know, on a normal, any given day without the spawn, a slow day is literally cast, 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 and you're getting nothing. We've already got one keeper and one fish that was just about keeper size almost there within you know maybe an hour of time out here so that's pretty good and i'll keep saying it man if you want to catch easy fish and have a good day get out here get your rig set up get you some small shrimp and it's literally just too easy Well, guys, would you look at that? Getting some catching done, baby. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, no. There we go. Shoot. Oh. This guy might be a keeper. always try and grab that 15 pound this stuff will slice your hands what'd you get is that a fresh water or salt water drum? uh it's a sheep's head, sheep's head okay. yeah all right look at his mouth. Oh, yeah right. oh, wow. sheep head. That's sheep head. yeah he's got sheepy looking teeth don't he yeah <laughs> that is funky right yeah. yeah so what'd you put on your hook a shrimp or a what? shrimp That's yeah what you're using up and down here pretty much yeah, shrimp or little little small crabs. Okay. They love those. Cool. Wow. Is that a fish you'll eat? Um, yeah, we're not keeping any today because they're spawning right now. Oh, okay. really? So uh, we've got a bunch in the freezer from the last couple trips. Good for you. There's always a lot of travelers and passerbys here at the jetty. For whatever reason, it's a an attraction. And they always get a kick out of the sheep's head because of those teeth. Look at him, he's got that shrimp in his throat. I do believe we've got ourselves another keeper here. So I can say that I caught my limit. Just to be a cool guy. Let's measure him really quick on the board. Oh yeah, that's going to keep all day. That's about a 16 incher. That is nice, that is nice. It's even nicer for this guy because he gets to go home and finish the job with that spawn. It's got a beautiful ladyfish to go rub up next to. There we go. Another one, y'all. trying to dig down into those rocks for safety no sir buddy coming up here with me come on don't think this guy will keep come on just want to slide him up ah oh, damn it now we're gonna let him go out a little bit here
dude. These fucking flies, man. Woo-wee. All right, y'all, there goes another one. This guy certainly doesn't look like keeper size. But the beauty of it is I'm not here to keep fish today. We're just making videos. And I'll be honest, this video is already turning out to be a pretty good one. I'm going to go ahead on this next cast or catch, kind of give a really in-depth, all-around rundown. Kind of like a, a final paragraph, just going over everything for the video. Dude, I've got a fly in my face, man. Whew, I feel like that's been a big part of this video, just talking crap about flies. Come here, dude. All right, so for starters, on our rundown, small hook. So again, look at this mouth. It's even hard to get your fire or forceps in there to get a hold of your hook and get it out. Tiny hook, fits in the mouth really good. Great to get behind this row of teeth they've got and stick into that soft portion. So you wanna use a tiny hook. I'll go ahead and show you all the package here in a second. So these are the hooks. As you can see, very tiny, size four octopus hooks. Very, very small hooks. And I mean, you guys saw why it's important that, you know, it's a small hook. And the same goes with our bait. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Kevin had uh, left early and they fortunately got a bunch of small shrimp from a different bait shop. So you can see kind of hand picking the smallest shrimp I can find in this batch. And it's the same exact reason we, we go with a small hook. The smaller the shrimp, that guy can come get a hold of the whole thing and it leads to a lot more hookups. As far as hook placement goes, I just put it right here behind his head, or the horn, I mean, kind of in his head, and then depth. So as you can see, we've got about seven foot of leader line. I like to go for two weights so your shrimp can sink down there faster. And then you got your cork off here on your other swivel. And the reasoning we like to do that, I don't think I explained that well earlier. Um, you can see how we've got cracks in between these rocks, right? They continue doing that as you go further out. So the further we go, the uh, cracks are still gonna be there, right? These sheep's head, what they do is they hide in between the cracks. They eat crabs, shrimp, barnacles, anything they can crunch on down there, that's what they're gonna be eating up. So our depth is out there deep enough to get into, like just barely dangle our shrimp over these cracks because you don't want to be in there. That's how you get stuck and you have to retie your crap. But you want your shrimp just tantalizing these sheep's head. So it's barely hanging over these cracks. They see it, they swim out, attack it, and then they get caught. All right. I think that really covers all of our bases, boys. Okay, that cast was a little too far. But like right here, right here is the perfect range. And as the wind and the waves bring that in a little bit closer, it's just constantly hovering over those cracks. And a sheep's head will see it and they come and grab it. It's easy money, dude. Alrighty, y'all, that is gonna do it here for today's video. What you just saw, that little fish, is pretty much what's been messing with us for the last probably two hours, uh, three hours. And uh, yeah, the sheep's head have stopped biting. We still have a little bit of sun. It feels bad to leave right now, but these flies are ridiculous. They are, they're, they're under my skin, man. They have been for a while now. So we're gonna cut it short today, but I was able to get a nice video. I'm glad we were able to catch some fish. Two keepers, I think four sheep's head total, maybe five, I'm not, I don't remember. But it was a solid day for it being so slow. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys learned something. I tried my best to give helpful tips, meaningful knowledge, Hopefully it worked, but yeah, anyways, I'm yapping. Hope you guys have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace.